beginning of time, each passing age has left behind some vital knowledge, improving its earlier marvels and developing newer miracles. The beginning of the development of science and technology in the Philippines can be traced back during the pre-colonial era. Before the Spaniards colonized the island, our ancestors were already familiarized with practices that involve science and technology. Filipinos were already immersed on medical and herbal medicine and developed agriculture and engineering. The Spanish introduced formal education and founded scientific institutions. The progress of science and technology in the Philippines continued under American rule. Science during the American period was inclined towards agriculture, food processing, medicine, and pharmacy. Today, many significant inventions and discovery has been credited to Filipinos. The need to develop a country's science and technology has generally been recognized as one of the imperatives of socio-economic progress. This has become a widespread concern in nation-building, especially since the post-World War years. The development of science and technology in the Philippines gained more governmental support during the Fifth Republic. Each president has its own agenda and the development of science, technology, and innovation throughout their term. The world's eye was on the Philippines after it successfully toppled down almost a decade of dictatorship rule through a peaceful demonstration tagged as the EDSA People Power Revolution. President Corazon Cuanco Aquino faced both economic and political problems of the country. Her rule as president began on February 25, 1986. She was tasked to put together a nation devastated by the rule of her predecessor, Ferdinand E. Marcos. During Corazon Aquino's State of the Nation address in 1990, she said that science and technology development shall be one of the top three priorities of the government towards an economic recovery. In all of our efforts to sustain the forces in our economy, we have emphasized the use of science and technology. At present, we are transferring technology from those who generate them to the end users, especially in our rural areas. The National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology or DOST, giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. One of the goals of her administration was to achieve the status of being an industrialized country by 2000, but the Congress did not put much priority in handling bills related to science and technology. It was during her term that Executive Order No. 128 abolishes Republic Act No. 3859, also known as the Philippine Inventors Incentive Act. It gave assistance to Filipino inventors through giving financial aid and to help inventors market their product. Despite the abolishment of the said provision, her administration gave rise to new avenues for the government to aid the progress of science and technology in the country. The rule that followed Aquino's presidency established steadier governance of the Philippines. Fidel V. Ramos took office in 1992 and immediately worked on the country's recovery. There were noticeable improvements regarding science and technology, as stated in his State of the Nation address. In Mr. Sona, there was a significant increase in personnel specializing in the science and technology field, and at 1998, the Philippines was estimated to have around 3,000 competent scientists and engineers. Schools were becoming more modernized and updated with addition of high-tech equipment for student improvement. Teachers were getting trained programs to benefit themselves and their students.
Healthcare services were promoted through local programs such as Doctors to the Barrio program. The healthcare programs were innovative and effective as shown by the change in life expectancy from 67.5 years in 1992 to 69.1 years in 1995. I commend to this Congress the proposal to establish a national program for gifted Filipino children in science and technology. In his sixth sauna, education was one of the primary storylines wherein programs such as National Program for Gifted Filipino Children in Science and Technology was established. Nice priority to assign to the proposed Magna Carta for Science and Technology Personnel, which awards various incentives to our people to engage in science and technology. The award was published in order to give incentives and rewards for people who have been influenced in the field of s &P. A film actor, Joseph Ejercito Estrada, succeeded Ramos as president in 1998. Estrada was placed in the office by a wide margin of votes. In his term, he signed two major legislation in connection with science and technology. One landmark achievement here is the passage by Congress of the Clean Air Act. It was in his second State of the Nation address that Estrada announced the passage of the Clean Air Act. It was designed to protect and preserve the environment and ensure the sustainable development of its natural resources. We will exploit our competitive advantage in high-tech industries. Our science and technology policies are being reoriented towards satisfying the needs of the underprivileged. His last State of the Nation address pushed for the advancement of industries and schools in the internet age, as well as the announcement of the passage of the e-commerce act. The Electric Commerce Act of 2000 is a law that watches computer hackers and provide opportunities for new businesses emerging from the internet-driven new economy. His term did not last long as his administration was rotted by corruption. Critics accused him of failing to live up to his promises. This revelation led to Estrada's impeachment in November 12, 2000. On the same day, Estrada's Vice President, Lore Macapagal Arroyo, succeeded his position as President. Arroyo's administration was dubbed as the Golden Age of Science and Technology of the Philippines. Numerous laws and projects that concerns both the environment and science to push technology as a tool to increase the country's economic level. This is to help increase the productivity from science, technology, and innovation and help benefit the poor. Moreover, the term Philippine innovation was the coined term used in helping the Philippines to be an innovation hub in Asia. She established the Technology Transfer Act of 2009 on her term. This is an act providing the framework and support system for the ownership, management, use, and commercialization of intellectual property generated from research and development funded by the government and for other purposes. One of the more known laws to be passed by her administration was Republic Act 9367 or the Biofuels Act. On June 30, 2010, Pinigno Simeon Coanco Aquino III was proclaimed as the 15th President of the Republic of the Philippines. On his term, he established the Department of Information, Communication, and Technology. It is an institution responsible for planning, development, and promotion of the country's information and communication technology agenda in support of national development. In 2014, Aquino congratulated four national scientists for their contribution in the scientific field.
there is a need for the government to critically re-examine the science, technology, and innovation policies and provisions in order to be able to redirect this toward the goal of obtaining a strong, self-reliant economy and society.